Let's go ahead and dive into some Zoom tips that relatively few people are using and can really set you apart as a standout instructor for your students. There's a good chance that sometime over the last six to eight months, you felt like, why don't your students ever respond during a Zoom meeting? Why do they keep their cameras off? Why is it dead silent? Well, probably because your Zoom meeting's boring as, okay, there might be some other reasons, but the point of this video is I wanna share some advanced Zoom tips and tactics that you can do to make your meeting more dynamic. And now why the big accusation for you having boring Zoom meetings? Let's be real. You have been to a Zoom meeting where you've been bored, be it a department meeting, be it professional development, be it wine and happy hour with your friends. You may have had great intentions for that meeting, but it ended up kind of being boring. And the internet is at your fingertips. Why not go there? The distraction is huge. So in order to really keep people engaged in your Zoom lectures, in your Zoom meetings, it needs to be dynamic. And there are simple things that we can do that yes, they are a bit more advanced, but they can go a long way to increasing just participation and engagement and a better user experience for your students. Now the tips I'm gonna go through in this video are definitely more advanced. It's not that the majority of people can't use them, but I'm going to go from the least advanced to the most advanced. And so as we get further into this video, the tips that I'm going to suggest are gonna be more tech heavy and really require some of you to be really tech savvy in order to be able to do. But that doesn't mean the ones earlier in the video are any less valuable. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you as an advanced Zoom tip is how to use waiting rooms in a different way than you might have ever before, or in a way that helps prepare students in enhanced class and set the intention and the goal for classes or meetings or office hours, however you want to use waiting rooms. I am here on my Zoom dashboard online and I'm going to go down here to settings. And again, I am using the most up-to-date version of Zoom that is provided to me by my university, so it does have some of those extra features. So yours may look a little different than this. But what I'm going to do is under the meetings, you will see this waiting room and waiting room options down here. If you click customize waiting room, what you can actually see is that you can put a logo that your students will see when they come in. And you could see that it tells you exactly the size. So width and height of 60 pixels, which you can edit in Photoshop or just about any photo editor. Um, and cannot excite, exceed 400 pixels. So you could do a 400 by 400, nice little pixel here. It could be a nice little graphic of your course or you, or it could have some nice information about your office hours and things like that. Great tool right there. So let's say I want mine to be my Epic Higher Ed. There we go. So you can see that coming into a waiting room, they will see this. And then there's a custom notification. So typically it's please wait. The meeting host will let you in soon. So you can edit this and say, um, class will start soon. Or you can say that and then you can say something even like question of the day, dog or cat. So this gets students thinking about some sort of question that you're going to ask them when they come into class. This can help boost engagement. So they'll see a custom message. Now, yes, if you really want to take this as far as it can go, you will have to update this waiting room between classes. So there is some legwork there. But if it's an office hours or however you want to use this, there's so many different things. Uh, if you could say open office hours will admit based on um, 
first first come first serve just so a message is out there they know you will get to them to just hang out this is a great way to use it i really like waiting rooms for office hours even here under your meeting topic you can edit your meeting topic and you could edit this little notice and disclosure now your university or your organization may have an important distinguished one so that i want to just leave right there but the point is is that the meeting topic this is what you will do when you actually create a meeting so let's go ahead and close this and when i go to create a meeting and I schedule a meeting the topic is the name of it so you can put the topic right in there and you can put your meeting description in there and in the waiting room it should show both of those so when students or whoever is coming into your waiting room they will see one a nice logo from you perhaps a customized message where you can give them prompts that you want them to think about before class starts and be ready to answer when you get in. And this is simple, this is small, right? But it it's an easy way to just kind of increase that experience that you are giving your students during a Zoom session. And that's really one of the big things to make and improve engagement. I, I challenge you to try that question of the day. Put a little question of the day thing ready to go that students can quickly answer when they come in help get chat going get people talking even arguing a little bit like coke versus pepsi which is better that sort of thing okay we're here in zoom and the next thing that i want to show you is actually how to take custom backgrounds up a notch and actually make them more relevant than just some visually aesthetic background so what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go down here to our video settings and we're gonna do choose a virtual background. Now in here, you can see that I have just the preloaded ones. Over here, you'll see this plus button and we are going to upload an image to start with. Okay, so now that I've located the image that I want to use, I'm going to double click on it. And now what you can see is that my background became a little announcements background. So with a little bit of playing around on this background what I can do is I could get closer I could get further away and I can actually have announcements right up here as I talk about it and so maybe you'll want to figure out that you want to sit on this side of the screen so that they can see the announcements kind of come down through here and this is just a way to add visuals to the announcements that you talk about during class and it's a nice little easy one and kind of the cool thing about this is all you have to do is edit this image in powerpoint save it as an image and then upload it each day so put the announcements you want them in upload it and there it's ready to go as a background for you so i actually have a whole bunch of these in my template pack on epic higher ed so if you're interested in getting these and more that you can fully customize I'll put the link to my template pack in the description below. So let's go to the next one here. So I'm gonna get rid of my virtual background that there will be none. But what I want to do is you can actually upload videos, right? They have a couple of pre-designed ones in here that, that are nice. One of the things I'm gonna do is I'm going to come here and add a video and I'm going to select one of these digital timers. Now you can see that as soon as i clicked on this a 10 minute timer started and so if you're doing a nice activity in class where you are actually having students do some sort of timed activity you can without having to go and change all your screen shares and stuff like that still having you up you can have a nice timer and let's say we need to reset this timer what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to that virtual background and i'm just going to choose it again and so if I go none, go back, and it resets. Let's go ahead and, so I've got a ton of these timers ready to go. So what I can do, let me just upload a lot of them here real quick. So add videos. I can add all of these ready to go. 
So a one minute timer with a white background. I can also add a nice 15 minute timer with a black background, depending on what you prefer. Um, or if you wanna get a little adventurous, you can even do something like nice, serene ocean waves for when you're going through some sort of exercise or talk or anything you want an on-screen timer for. These are great options and I'm not having to do anything fancy besides choosing a virtual background. Um, we've got these nice ocean waves. Um, let's see, we even have in here, I have some sharks. So if you want to kind of be underwater with some sharks, we one of my favorites here is some nice tulips. There we go. So a gorgeous view of tulips with the clouds going by in the mountains. So this is a really cool little feature that I actually think is a really creative way to step your Zoom game up, right? It's easy to do. You have this nice on-screen timer with a nice video background while you're having students work through things or just trying to keep track of some sort of countdown in general. Now, if you're wondering where I got these, well, I created them. And the great thing is I am sharing them with you. So if you want to get these, I have in each one of them, so like a white, background, a black background, and a bunch of different like fancier backgrounds like this one from 15, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1, and 30 seconds. When you get it, you get all of those. So go check those out, epichighered.com. I'll have the link in the description, of course. Okay, the next thing that I want to show you is actually how you can use your phone or even your iPad for a lot of different functions within Zoom. And so some of you may know how to do this, but I wanna give you a couple of ideas with it that you may not have thought about. So if you are here in Zoom and you go to share screen, you'll notice that there's a phone or an iPad and notice it is iPhone or iPad. So that is kind of one of the caveats here. There is some advanced software that you can get to hook up an Android or some other type of phone using it, but natively and what I have is iPhones and iPads so I want to show you that. So what it's going to do is it is going to install the plugin if you haven't already. You can tell I recently updated my Zoom so the plugin needs updated as well. And now it's going to say choose the correct one. You go to screen mirroring and you connect to the Wi-Fi that I'm on and you will see that Zoom dash dusty. Now, this is gonna connect my phone screen. There it is, all right. So now, here in Zoom, we are sharing the phone screen. Within this phone screen, there's a few things that we can do. So one of the first things that I wanna show you how to do is a way to increase engagement and co-work or collaborate with your students. And if you go to the App Store and get an app called Forest, I really like Forest as a Pomodoro timer. And what this means is that it does a focused work session in which you're not supposed to do anything but focus on the work that you're trying to do. And you can customize this time, but the thing that really is cool here is you can create a room. And there's tons of Pomodoro timers. Heck, you could even use one of the background timers that I just showed you. The difference about Forest is it actually allows you to collaborate with other people and grow like ferns and trees and shrubs based on how well you focus without using your phone. So you can create a room and when you create a room it allows you to invite other people and you can see that now there's a room code on the screen. And with that room code your students could join and then you could start and plant this and there's not enough people in there because it's just me but once multiple people have joined you can start this little timer it'll count down from 25 and you can do a focused work session so that's one way to use your phone and the point of this is you could use any app on your phone with your students now if you're gonna be sharing the screen of your phone obviously it's important to Make sure there's nothing sensitive that might pop up on the screen in terms of incoming calls and things like that. 
So you can use any app to directly show your students on screen or even interact with your students on screen. Um, so the next thing I want to show you here is that you can actually use your phone as a second camera or as an overhead style camera. And what you do to do this is you're just going to go to camera and there we go. So maybe I am really excited to show you my cool new, not new, but original Tommy Charizard here. Let's see if we can get it in focus. Maybe not, but perhaps you have a really cool artifact or something physical that you want to show your students. And it's a lot easier to set up your phone and be able to manipulate it here like this and still have your face on screen versus like trying to show it up here and right you're trying to get this i really like just having it here that you can use and again um it does show that your photos are down in that bottom corner so keep an eye out for sensitive things but just using the photos app or the camera tool you can do something like this so the next thing you can do with it is actually use it as a little bit of an overhead board so here you can see that I just have a nice piece of paper and a note card and I can draw out my concepts which is really great um, I really like doing this as a tool you can just use again your smartphone as a second camera or even if you want to give a little tour of your space or there's a lot of creative things that you can do with this share screen function. Okay, finally, the last thing I want to show you with screen sharing or having a tool like an iPad or your phone around is actually enhancing the whiteboard within Zoom. So you can see that I now have a secondary account right here. That is actually me. You could, right, there's the, oh my gosh, how many Zooms are there? Um, that is actually my account and I have under security enabled screen sharing and so I do this a lot with my students when I want to use the whiteboard feature because conveniently I can use my Apple Pencil along with my iPad rather than trying to navigate the mouse on my computer screen. So what I will do is on my iPad account I will go to share screen and click whiteboard and now I have the beautiful whiteboard that I can draw a potentially terrible, surprisingly friendly Godzilla on for you all, right? That's terrible. But you can see that using this tool will allow me to have more control over what I write and draw and show on my computer screen. So instead of really sloppy mouse drawings, I can use my Apple Pencil on my iPad just like I would like writing on a whiteboard, that kind of thing. And so this is a really powerful way to just take that whiteboard feature up a notch. Okay, so for my last and final tip of this advanced Zoom features video, this is gonna be the most complex. It's, it's pretty extra, so to speak, but it's also pretty cool. So if you really want to go above and beyond and make your Zoom meetings an experience that your students are going to remember, this is one of the things you can do. And it does require being pretty tech savvy. There are other softwares at play here, but one of the really cool things is you can see that we're here in Zoom. And if I wanted to, what I can do is I can give you some announcements. And you can see that right here in Zoom, I have a nice little announcement bar now, right below me where I have my daily announcements, my first, my second, and my third. And now let's say, you know, I am ready to lecture. So let's go ahead and go to our lecture screen where we are going to pull up our PowerPoint and I am going to have my key points right below me. I'm off to the right. And again, this is all in Zoom. And now what you can see is that I actually have that PowerPoint 
going and I can navigate through it just like any normal PowerPoint and slowly work through this. You might recognize this from my high impact teaching video from the other day. If you missed that one, I'll have it right above me in the card. So this is a really cool way to use Zoom. And you could see that one of the really powerful ways to do this, or one of the really powerful things about this is I could actually switch between all sorts of different things from just my camera to a pre-designed template or screen, all sorts of different things. And it's on the fly. You save all that time by having to stop doing all the different sharings and things like that. So what I'm using is I'm using a software called OBS. Now what OBS is, is it's the software that a lot of like live streamers use. So Twitch streamers or YouTube streamers, people who constantly host live streams, this is the software that they use. And with a little bit of clever manipulating, including um, downloading a virtual camera link and a virtual audio link, those are two important things that you need to make this happen. You could actually see that you can set up these scenes over here that allow me to switch between them on the fly. So using OBS, it's a pretty in-depth way, but this is hopefully to spark some ideas. If you want to go deeper on this, I can help you reach out to me or a lot of just Googling and searching YouTube can help point you on the right way. Definitely don't have time for it in this video. Couple caveats here. This overlay is just for me and my video. So if I become a little tiny screen way off on someone's like grid, that becomes a problem. So one of the things that you're going to want to do if you use this is make sure you pin your video as the instructor so that everyone else can see it. So that is, that's a big part of it. The second part is make sure in OBS, your streaming quality is really high. Um, it automatically defaults to be really low. And so you'll come across garbled and blurry if you don't go in and manually override those settings. So again, this one is meant to inspire and be like, whoa, you can do some really cool stuff in Zoom with some outside tools. And ultimately, I just want you to break outside of the standard Zoom meeting. Let's make these dynamic. Let's make them intentional. Let's make them something your students are going to remember. You're gonna get more engagement. You're gonna get better outcomes. And yeah, it might require a little bit of work on your part, but if you want better engagement, you're gonna have to work for it, right? Uh, that's that's part of it. I really hope this video helped inspire you and give you ideas to take your Zoom meetings to the next level. When students don't know what to expect, they're going to be more likely to show up. They're going to enjoy class more. They're going to engage more. So try to think outside of the Zoom box and think, what can you do with this tool? It's a powerful tool and we are underutilizing it. So hopefully this video helps. Feel free to reach out to me. Email me at epichighered at gmail.com if you want to go deeper with any of this. Otherwise, you can find us in our private Facebook group just by searching Epic Higher Ed Groups. I really encourage you or I ask you humbly to like and subscribe to the channel. So like this video, hit the bell and subscribe to the channel. That means a lot and really makes a bigger difference than you might realize when it comes to the success of these videos and making this possible for me to continue making these videos for you. Thank you so much. And over here, I of course have two other videos that you might enjoy. We will see you next time.